Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can import game levels from the Tiled Map Editor over to the Unity Engine using a tool called Super Tiled to Unity. So the Tiled Map Editor and Super Tiled to Unity you can get off of itch.io. I'll have a link to it in the description. And the basic idea is that you bring over your tile map files, your tile set files, the PNG images that your art is based off of, and then with those files in your Unity project, Super Tiled to Unity will automatically create the necessary prefabs so that you can just drag and drop those levels into your game with collisions included if you have those set up. So when you download Super Tiled to Unity, it's going to come as a Unity package file. So you can just double click on that. And then if necessary, select the Unity editor that you currently have open for your project. Uh, you can find the exact version up here at the top. So you can also see that there are example files, but I am going to turn those off for right now. So I'm going to import everything but the examples. And let's go ahead and import that into the project. And you should have a new folder called Super Tiled to Unity. So when you have this folder in your project, the next thing we need to do is to copy over the tiled and PNG files. So I'm going to start by going to the assets in my project. I'm going to right click inside and do show and explore. Let's jump into the assets folder and then I'm going to drag and drop what I need into the project. So it's important to note at this state is that in order for all of the files to link up properly, that you need to maintain the same relative paths to each file that you had open and tiled. So in this case, jumping up a couple levels, you can see I have a folder called tiled and I have a folder called art. Art is where the PNGs are for me and tiled and where the tile maps and tile sets are. So for this to work, I need to copy the files over with the same directory setup. I don't want to bring over everything right now, so I'm going to do that manually really quick. So I'll right click in here and let's create the folders. So in the Unity project, tiled, tile sets, and I'll copy over the files that I need. So you can see I'm using city furniture and city interior tiles. So I'll select those two and I'll copy those over to tile sets. Then I'll go up a directory, get the tile maps, interior map one, and let's put that in tile maps up here. Okay, and then I need my artwork wherever that is stored. So let's go into art and city interiors. In this case, I'll just copy the whole thing over. So I'll paste that in here. And now let's go into Unity and see where we're at. So if we open up tiled and then tile maps, we should be able to click on interior map one and we can see that it properly imported. If you see any errors at the top about how it didn't load the tile sets properly, you can always go click on the tile sets and wherever they're stored and see if there's an error here. So your tile sets can get an error if they can't find the PNG for the tile set and your tile map might give an error if the tile sets can't load or the tile sets aren't in the location they're supposed to be. So if when you're importing all of this into Unity, you need to change the way your folders are set up, you can manually edit it. So if I was to take one of these TSX tile set files, I can right click on it, do open, which would default to Visual Studio, but you can change that to whatever you need. And you'll be able to see the image source up here. So this is the relative path to where you would find the tile set file. So you can just manually type in your own path here and save it, and then it should be able to find it properly. Of course, you can do something similar with the tile map as well. So once you have the tile map inside of Unity and you can see it in the preview, you might want to take notice of the pixels per unit. So in Unity, this defaults to 100 for everything. But if you're working in a pixel game, you might decide that you want one unit to be one grid square, just like when you're building your tile map. So in this case, I might make that 16 for the pixels per unit and hit apply. Now note, you also need to set the same value on the tile sets as well. So let's go find the tile sets. I'm going to select both of these at the same time so that I can edit their settings up here. 16 pixels per unit, apply. And then left click on the tile map and drag it into the game level. Or if you want it to just be centered at 00, zero you can just manually type that in as well once it's up there. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play and test how things work. So you can see I have uh, collisions on the walls, which are coming from the tiled map editor. That's fine. I'll show you how to set that up and fix any mistakes in a minute. Uh, but we can also see that there are problems with the sorting here. So that is going to be dependent on the sort layer for the different layers on the tiled map. So you can see that the ground tile map layer coming from tiled gets the sorting layer of default and order in layer zero. 
So that's the one on bottom here. And then the next one up, walls will get a one and furniture gets a two. So walls, one, furniture, two. So we should check the order for our player. And let's go ahead and find the sprite renderer. We can see that it's currently on default zero. So that means that the player is going to show under the walls and it's going to show under the furniture. But if it matches the ground, then it is going to sort by our rules and our project. So if I go up to edit project settings, you can see that the sort mode is set to custom access right now. Transparency sort access of Y, which means that when the sorting layer matches between the player and the ground, it's going to be sorting based on whichever has the higher Y position. But in this case, we always want the player to sort above the ground. So a simple way of fixing that would be to click on the player and make it order in layer, uh, let's say two, so that it sorts with the furniture, but always above the ground and the walls. But if we do it like that, then we need to make sure that all of our maps across the game use these same tile map layers. So a better way would probably be to use sorting layers and then to tell each of these tile layers uh, which sorting layer they should be in. That way we don't need to worry about the number as much when our character is going between the levels of the game. So right now we don't have any other sorting layers. Let's add a few to the game. So anyway, you have the sorting layer, you can add a sorting layer, which will bring up this window here. Let's add a few. So I'm going to call one ground. And maybe above that I'll have, let's say, walls. And I can have one for above for just anything that should always show above. Okay, so now that I have those in the game, I can go back to the tiled editor. So if you want to open that really quickly, uh, you can just go find the tile map. And if it's set to open in tiled, then you can just double click there and edit it uh, straight from within the Unity project. And then for each of these layers, we just have to set a custom property on them. So to add a custom property, you can see over here on the left, we have the properties window. Just click plus here. And what you want to call it is Unity Sorting Layer. Uh, caps matter here, so make the S on sorting lowercase. Hit OK. And then we gave it the name of the layer. So the ground tile layer is going to be the ground sorting layer. So just ground there. And I made that capital, so I'm going to make it capital in here. Not sure if it matters, but let's just be consistent. And then click on walls. Let's add the custom property, Unity Sorting Layer, and then walls here. So for the furniture layer, we do want to also give that a custom value. Otherwise, it will just take the layer under it, which is walls, and increment it by one. So for furniture here, let's give it Unity Sorting Layer and make that default. OK, so now we can save this and go back over to Unity. And if we click on each of the three layers, we should be able to see the sorting layer updated and furniture as well set to default with the order in layer of zero. So if we hit play and go into game view mode now, we can see that sorting with the ground is working properly. Still have an issue with the furniture there, but it's also working with the walls because that's just sorting by uh, the layer and not position or anything like that. If we go over to this chair, we can see it sort of works. So the player's in front here, but if we go a little bit higher, you can see that the chair is showing on top. So the sorting itself is working. And if I haven't mentioned already, if you go up to edit project settings to get that sorting by Y axis, uh, you would change the sort mode here to custom axis in uh, project settings graphics, and then the sort axis to Y. So that's how it's using the Y position to determine which shows in front. And so if we go to the tile maps and click on interior map one, you can see layer object sorting is currently set to stacked. I think what we want to do is change this to custom sort axis and apply. So this will use the same sorting as in our project settings. Let's hit play now and see how that works. So let's go up to the chair. We can see now we're properly showing in front of it, even if we're right up against it. And if we go behind the chair, well, that's not going to work. Let's try something else. Maybe this chair over here then we can actually be behind the chair, which is what we're looking for. So we can be in front of the chair and behind the chair. So yeah, just make sure that your layer object sorting is set to custom sort access for your tile maps. If you're going to be using sort access Y for your sorting. Now you saw that I have collisions with some of the tiles in the game. Let's take a look at how you can set up your tile sets and tiled to actually have that collision. Okay, so now to add the collisions, you do that on the tile set 
level of things. So I'm going to open, uh, let's say my interior tiles over in the tiled editor. So for each tile, you can define a collision shape. So let's click on a tile and over here on the tile collision editor, let's zoom in. And you can see this one already has a collision shape because I can left click on it with this tool, the select objects tool. So this is just a perfect box shape around everything. And you can see that that is also the case for most of these wall tiles. Some of them have a different shape and there is a really handy tool you can use that will automatically detect these rectangular shapes, which is detect bounding box. Now you can see I added a hotkey to this control D. There isn't one by default, but if you want to add a hotkey, you can go up to edit preferences, uh, keyboard, uh, type in the name of the action that you're trying to add a shortcut to, in this case, detect for detect bounding box, and then just set your shortcut there. So if I go find a tile that should have a collision, but currently doesn't, then now I can just do control D. It'll automatically find the bounding box, depending on which pixels have actual uh, information there, non-transparency, and it'll create a bounding box. So now this tile already has collisions. And I can click on these other ones down here, control D, add a collision, control D, control D. You can see how this is very quick when you have the shortcut. Now, in uh, the cases like this down here, you probably don't want collisions in this area because that's transparency. It might actually be part of the ground. It's going to do a bounding box as wide as there's pixels and as tall as there's pixels. So it's not going to cut out this little chunk here. So I'm going to select this and control X to remove it. And instead, this time I need to do it manually. So I'm going to use the insert polygon tool and I can hold control down, which will make snapping to the corners very easy. So holding control down, left click on that corner left click on the other corner, the bottom left. And I can't snap to the corner over here because we've got to go halfway in between. So instead, I'm just going to let go of control and kind of uh, manually press over here as close as I can get it. You can always zoom in control and middle mouse wheel in to make it more precise. Then left click, add that point, come up here, left click, add that point. And finally, over here on this side, left click, add the point and then snap it back to the one on the top left. So now if you use this select tool, you can see that this shape has this section cut out. So I got to do the same thing on this tile over here. So let's add the three corners, holding control down, left click, left click, left click, and then add our collision shape here, over here as well, down towards the bottom, and over to the left side. And all, of, all we need to do to update this inside of the Unity game is just to save our file as long as our tile set is located inside of Unity. Otherwise, if you're editing a version of your tile set or tile map outside of Unity, you would just need to copy the new versions back over into Unity. And uh, the plugin Super Tile to Unity will automatically update things. So if we hit play now, I should have the collisions on these walls fixed, as you can see here. Uh, fixed collisions. And let's actually test by walking outside that there's no collisions here because there shouldn't be. So you can see I can't walk through the wall, but I can walk into that little corner area. So that is pretty cool to have a polygon shaped collision. So our collisions are much more precise. And if you ever want to see what your collision shapes look like inside of our tile map, then you can expand your tile layers. And there are these chunks. Uh, so this is for the physics, I believe. You can click on each chunk and see any collisions that would be in them. Obviously, since this is the ground part of the tile map, there's nothing because you should be able to walk on the ground. But let's expand the walls and click on the chunks. So you can see that the chunks here actually have another game object under them, collision default. If you click on that, you can see a polygon collider built from all of these polygon shapes automatically imported from uh, the tile map. So this is our actual collision shape for this part of the map. And if we do the other chunk, you can see uh, more collision shapes over here. If we expand the furniture, same type of deal, uh, expand the chunks and you can see the collision shapes on them. Note that for the top part of the chair, I didn't add any collision shape since uh, this part, I, I don't think should be something that the player collides with. So uh, let's expand the other chunk collision shape on the right hand side. So yeah, all you really need to do is just open up your tile sets inside a tiled, find the object you want to add a collision shape to, left click in them, and you can define it using the tools inside of here. Detect bounding box, obviously very easy and quick to use, but it may not work in all cases. So in this case, if we use detect bounding box, it'll just be 
wherever there's pixels. So it works good for this shape if I want a collision there, but I'd actually rather the uh, player to just be able to walk across that. So I'm gonna remove that. Place that the bounding box does kind of fail is where you have shadows already built into your tiles for furniture and stuff like that. So here you can see that because there is actual uh, color information on these bottom pixels, although that's supposed to be partially transparent shadow, it also makes it so that uh, it's part of the collision shape. So when you get your bounding box, I can just kind of scale this upwards, clicking on there and move this up to there to get a better collision shape. So not too much of a problem, just something to know if your shadows are baked into your furniture. So that's pretty much going to be it for importing your tile maps and tile sets from tiled into Unity. Uh, you can see that when you are editing inside of the project, just opening it in tiled and editing it there, that it's really seamless in uh, getting it to update on your game map in the Unity itself. So really handy tools, and I plan to use a lot more of it. So I'll try to have more tutorials about both Tiled and Super Tiled to Unity on my channel as well. If you want to check out this demo, I'll have a link to my Patreon down below where you can download it. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.